Chapter 8, Lesson 4, Essential Question. How can you divide fractions by solving a related multiplication sentence? Unlock the problem. Three friends share a one-fourth pound block of fudge equally. What fraction of a pound of fudge does each friend get? Underline what you're being asked to find and circle the important information. You should have underlined what fraction does each friend get, and then a circled a fourth of a pound, and then how many friends? There were three friends. I use blue to underline the word share because generally when you're sharing something, you're going to be dividing. So that's a key word um, to know that we have a division um, problem here. So how much do we have? We have one fourth of a pound, and we're dividing it by how many friends we're sharing it. Um, by three friends. So we have one-fourth divided by three. So let the rectangle represent a one-pound block of fudge. So that's this rectangle right here, the whole thing. Divide the rectangle into fourths, which they did. There's one, two, three, four. Then divide each fourth into three equal parts. Okay, so I'll press pause and divide them into th each fourth into three parts. Okay, so there we go. I added those lines. Now there's three parts within each of those fourths. So how many um, parts are there all together? Well, that's a four by a three, so that means that there are now 12 parts in that whole rectangle. So when you divide one-fourth into three equal parts, you are finding one of three equal parts uh, or one-third of one-fourth. So now we're going to shade in one-third of one-fourth. So now we're only worried about this one block, and we're only going to shade in one part of that. So the one shaded square of the blue, that what is that fractional part of the entire square? Well, we only shaded in one, and how many are there total? There's one-twelfth. So now we can complete our number sentence that's below. We have one-fourth divided by three, which is the same, because that's the equal sign, as one-third times one-fourth. And our answer was one-twelfth. So each friend gets one-twelfth of a pound of fudge. Now, we want to pay attention right here. The one-fourth stayed the same, but what happened with our three and our one-third? That's what we'll be working on today. This is leading to the algorithm of how to divide fractions. So let's look at this example. Brad has nine pounds of ground turkey to make turkey burgers for a picnic. How many one-third pound turkey burgers can he make? Press pause, underline what you're being asked to find, circle the important information, and then also see if you can answer the green box on the right. You should have underlined how many one-third pound burgers can he make, and then even in the question where you're being asked to find is where you find the one-third, and then how much does he start with? He starts with nine. Now this one doesn't necessarily have a key word to tell you that you're dividing. You have to infer. You're starting with a larger sum, and you're breaking it into smaller pieces, and so that is how we know it is a division. So we're starting with nine, and dividing it or breaking it into one-third size pieces. So is our answer going to be um, less than 9 or greater than 9? Well, we're taking a whole number and breaking it into smaller parts. So that means our answer should end up being greater than 9. So the first step is to draw 9 rectangles to represent each pound of ground turkey. Okay, so there's the 9 rectangles. And then we're going to divide each rectangle into thirds. So press pause and divide each of these into three parts, thirds. Okay, so now you should have them divided into thirds. So when you divide the nine rectangles into thirds, you are finding the number of thirds in nine rectangles, or essentially we're finding nine groups of what do we make? Nine groups of three. So how many thirds are there? 
we made 27 thirds. So now we can complete our number sentence. We started with 9 and we divided it into 1 third. But that's also the same thing for us as we found 9 groups of 3. Now, what's another way that we can write a whole number? We can write the whole number as a fraction by saying it's the same as 3 over 1. So, 9 times 3 over 1, how many parts did we end up with? 27. So, how many burgers can Brad make? Brad can make 27 burgers. Now, I want you to briefly look at this number of sentences, okay? So here we started with a fraction and broke a fraction into more pieces. And our answer is smaller than what we started with. In this case, we took a whole number and broke it into some smaller pieces. And they wanted to know the total number of that. So we ended up with a whole number. Just notice the difference from when you start with a fraction as then when you start with a whole number. So now that we've talked about, I mean, we've used models in previous lessons or diagrams, and then we've been working with multiplication sentences. So now we're going to look at these two examples. First, let's look at example A, okay? One-fourth divided by two equals one-eighth. We can see that. We had one, that's four, and then we divided it into twos, and one piece of that was one-eighth. We can also see that one half times one fourth is one eighth. So we had one fourth, one, two, three, four pieces, but we only needed one half of one of those fourths. So they divided it in half and then shaded it in one piece. Okay? So looking at example A, describe how the model shows that dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half. For this first one, I've just given you the sentence. It says the model shows that they both equal one eighth because it's true. We walked through that. For number two, I want you to see if you can come up with another sentence. Remember that when you start with the whole number, you're forming groups of something. So in your sentence, you should probably use the term groups of, because you started with four and you've ended up and you made groups of what. So press pause while you formulate your sentence. Here's the sentence from me. It shows there are eight halves in four, yeah, and that blank groups of blank is eight. So if you fill that in correctly, it should end up being there are four groups of two is eight. So now um, we need to remember that when we divide whole numbers, like six divided by two, our answer is less than our dividend six. And another example, 2 divided by 3, our answer is going to be less than 2, which is our first number, our dividend. Um, that one would be end up being a decimal or a fraction. So let's think about our try this. For these two expressions, which, quotient will, um, which one will have a quotient that is greater than the dividend? So the answer, will it be greater than or less than our first number, the, first, the dividend? So 1 half divided by 3 or 3 divided by 1 half. This is something that we've kind of talked about, so I want you to see if you can answer which one will have a quotient greater than the dividend. Press pause while you answer this. All right, so the answer is 3 divided by 1 half because we're finding the number of parts in 3. And that leads us into back, when you start with a fraction, your answer, the quotient, will be less than what you start with. But when you start with a whole number, then your answer will be, or your quotient will be greater than your first number. All right, so we've kind of hinted at it and we've talked it through a little bit, but here's the algorithm on how to divide fractions. You've seen that multiplication sentences are, can be equal to the, division facts. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to leave our our dividend, so that's our first one, we're going to leave our one half and just rewrite it. We're going to change this into a multiplication sentence that our previous one shows us that they are the same, they're equal. But we have to do one thing to our second number. We have to flip it. 
which is called using its reciprocal, using its opposite. So we can write 5 the same as 5 over 1, correct? So if we flip that, we're going to flip that so it's 1 fifth. So if we have 1 half divided by 5, so that means we're taking 1 half and breaking it into 5 smaller pieces, we're going to end up with a number less than what we started with. So then we flip that and we multiply straight across. So our answer is going to be 1 tenth. And that works the same thing as if you start with the whole number. Even if we have, say, 6 divided by 1 fourth. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to leave our 6, and I'm just going to use my equal signs to bring it straight across. So there's my 6, and then I'm going to flip my 4. So that means my 4 is going to end up being on top of my fraction, and then my 1 stays on the denominator. Now this is the same thing as just making it 6 times 4, or um, if you wanted to, it would be 24 over 1, which is the same thing as just 24. So again, the algorithm, you have to use your reciprocal. You have to flip the second number. So your divisor, you're flipping it. You're using the reciprocal. All right, for your share and show on numbers 1 and 2, um, they give you the model to help you fill in your sentences. And then on 3, 4, 5, and 6, I want to see the multiplication sentence written out. So even if you think you can do it in your head, I want to see it written out. And then I will be going over number 5 and 6 um, step by step. For, numbers, um, for number two, I'm not sure why they didn't keep the order of putting the number two of, or the reciprocal of two and in the second digit spot, but with it being multiplication, it doesn't matter. I just want you to realize that it's still the second, it's the divisor that they flipped. All right, so now on to number five. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my dividend, so one ninth and I'm going to change it to be a multiplication. And then I'm going to look at my 3. Now that's a whole number, so it's the same thing as 3 over 1, and I need to flip it. So that means my 1 needs to go on top, and my 3 goes on bottom. Then I multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is 1, and 9 times 3 is 27. They're both, uh, or 1 is a prime number, so it cannot reduce. So my answer is 1 27th. With number 6, I'm going to keep my dividend the same. That's my number 7. So I'm going to keep my 7. Multiply. Now 1 half. What is the reciprocal of 1 half? Well, I just need to flip it. So I need my 2 to be on top and my 1 to be on the bottom. And then my equal sign. Remember, when you're multiplying a whole number and a fraction, you multiply it only with the numerator. So that's going to be 14 over 1 which you don't need the one underneath it because 14 divided by 1 is 14, so our answer is just 14. You may now begin working on your other tasks.